Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Westinghouse EPX 2000 electric pressure washer. Special thanks to Westinghouse for sending this out for me to take a look at. So let's go ahead and just get this thing out of the box and then we'll put it together and then talk about some of its features before we test it out. So on the top here, it looks like we just have a manual and uh, some extra O-rings. We then have a styrofoam with four wheels, which is actually one of the unique features about their electric pressure washer that I think kind of sets it apart. Then we have our wand and the tip. We have our main unit and its extension cord. Our hose, a soap dispensing container, and some plastic clips. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff out of the plastic and set it on the table and then we'll start putting this together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is slide the casters into place and as you can probably tell by now, I'm doing a voiceover. Uh, unfortunately, I actually ended up losing all my audio I recorded during this. So just repeat that for all four casters. Then the next thing we're gonna go ahead and slide into place is the side hose holder. And that just slides and snaps into place once it's fully seated. And following that, we have the side phone cannon bracket, which also doubles as a cord holder for the electrical cord. We'll then put on the upper side spray gun holder onto the top and then we'll go ahead and put on the bottom lower side spray gun holder and then after that we're going to go ahead and just screw the hose on to the front and you're just going to want to make this nice and snug just hand tight We will then take the other end of the hose and go ahead and insert that into the bottle of the gun there and just depress the gray button, slides right into place and then release and it'll lock in and just give it a good jiggle to make sure that it's locked and secured. And then we're going to go ahead and take the wand there for the end and put it into place. There's actually two locking lugs and it only fits in the one way and you press down and twist and then release. And as you can see, this little part here goes forward and to get it to un come out, you have to push down and rotate and then pull it back out. So it locks it in pretty nicely. Okay, let's talk some specifications about the EPX 2000. It puts out 1500 PSI and uses approximately one and a half gallons per minute. It uses the cold tap water out of your hose and runs on 120 volts AC using approximately 10 amps. The unit itself weighs 12.56 pounds. It has a 15 foot hose that has a quick connect fitting on one end. And it also includes a 35 foot power cord with a GFCI plug, which is pretty cool because most of the other units I've seen do not have that. This unit also comes with a detergent bottle and it supposedly has a low center of gravity so it will not tip over. But that's enough to talk about it for now. Let's get outside and get this thing set up and rolling so we can actually see if this is the way it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take the garden hose and screw it into place on the back. And make sure it's nice and snug. Then I went ahead and turned on the hose. And now I'm going to take the electrical cord and unspool it and go ahead and get it plugged into the wall. And I'm going to go ahead and press the reset button on there. And as you'll notice in the video, the green light comes on, letting you know it's working. Then you go ahead and unspool the hose. And with the unit off still, we're going to go ahead and squeeze the trigger so that we can get all the air out of the system.
And you can see it sputter a little bit as it does that. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the end of the wand and stick it onto the gun here. And spray a little bit more just to let the water come all the way through. And go ahead and rotate it around so you guys can see. I'm going to flip it on and you can hear it do a quick cycle. And then there you go. Now it's up and running. And here I'm demonstrating the adjustable nozzle, which goes from very wide to very narrow.
Okay, now the last thing we're going to go ahead and do here is get everything packed up. I went ahead and turned off the water, and then I went ahead and came over and unplugged the power. Then after that, you're going to go ahead and remove the garden hose from the back of the unit. Then I'm going to go ahead and come over and grab the gun and remove the wand. Go ahead and let the water drain out and then place it back in its holder on the side of the unit. And go ahead and make sure you release the pressure out of the hose remaining and then after that it should pop out relatively easily. And then I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that off the front and stretch it out. My driveway has a mild slope to it so I went ahead and laid it out that way the water could just go ahead and drain right out of there. And then you take the gun and put it right back inside the side of the unit and it should hold right in place. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the electrical cord and I'm going to go ahead and wind it up. And I went ahead and fast forwarded it because it being such a long cord, which is super convenient, uh, it actually takes a little bit to get it wrapped up. But that is a problem that you want to have on a unit like this. You definitely don't want your power cord to be too short. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and put the soap bottle right on the back. And then grab the hose and go ahead and get it coiled up. Now, first time I coiled it up, I coiled it up just a little bit too big. So I actually ended up having to recoil it. As you can see there, it's just too big. It touches the ground. And that didn't take long, but now I'll know for next time. Just make sure I coil it nice and small. And that pretty much covers packing this thing up. Uh, I tilted it just a little bit to let any water drain. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about this thing and my final thoughts. Okay, so here we are for our final thoughts on the EPX 2000. I made a little pros and cons list just to try and kind of level out what I thought while using it. The first pro on my list is it has an extremely long power cord with the GFCI plug. 35 feet, that's insanely long compared to the other electric pressure washer that I have. Approximately has maybe a 10 foot cord. So I had to have an extension cord and then your extension cord's getting in the water and that poses a dangerous threat of electrocution and it's just not ideal. So they really thought this well out when they put that cord in place. That was a huge thing and I'm glad they did that. My next pro is the more flexible actual hose for the wand. This one is very easy to move. It's not getting stuck and it's not too stiff. The other electric pressure washer that I own is very stiff and when I uncoil it, it really wants to stay coiled. So maybe on a really warm day it would do okay, but most of the time I've used it, I've always been fighting with keeping that thing uncoiled so I can actually get the full length of cord or hose to actually use while I'm out there. So the next thing is something I actually thought up front was going to be a con and it really surprised me and that's the adjustable nozzle on the wand. I assumed that it was just going to be cheap and I wouldn't like it and that's just the way it was going to be. But I will say after using it, I actually really enjoyed it. It's super easy to adjust and once you set it to a specific setting, it'll stay there and it just works. So for example, when I was washing the car, I was able to spread to a wide spread just to get the soap off of the majority of the body. But then if I found a bug or something sticky that just didn't want to come off quite, then I could just narrow it down real tight and then get a beam to just blast those things off the vehicle. So in retrospect, I found that it was actually extremely handy and saved me a lot of time from having to switch back and forth between different nozzles. The next pro is the unit size. It's 
relatively short. It's small and it'd be easy to store pretty much anywhere. And at only 12 and a half pounds, it'd be easy for pretty much most anybody to lift and put potentially even on a high shelf or something along those lines. The next pro, which is a really big one up compared to some of the competitors and the particular model that I actually own, is it has the low center of gravity with four wheels that can turn uh, separated from each other. They're not tied to each other in any way. And because of this, it allows the unit to not tip over. And that is my biggest complaint of the other pressure washer unit that I have. I would unspool it and then I'd be fighting with that stiff hose and then I'd be moving along and all of a sudden, kung, it falls over on its side. And then I have to set it back up. And then a few minutes later, kung, back over on its side. And it's the most frustrating thing because it worked okay, but then I'm fighting with that all the time. And then it's just wasting time walking back over to stand it back up just for it to fall down again. And as you guys could see in the video, I was pulling this thing by the hose and it just kind of just followed me wherever I wanted. Uh, only when I went back around and kind of had to strategically wheel it through the hose and the power cord that I actually have to come back, lay some hands on it and move it around. So that is a huge plus, huge bonus. And that's literally my biggest complaint of the other one next to the hose is that it always falls over. So this unit right here has plenty of power for your standard homeowner everyday tasks. As you saw there, I was washing the car and then I was using it to clean up some, uh, it was a rust spot on the driveway that had fallen out there and stained it. And it worked just fine for that. You know, it's, I'm sure it would also work well for cleaning siding, all these basic homeowner tasks. It's not an industrial machine, but anything you wanted to do around your house, I think you would be hard pressed to find something that this wasn't capable of, that you wouldn't really need something that's more of an industrial level machine. And then the final pro on my list is the low price point. Just over $100 for this unit seems like a bargain. You know, it's cheaper than the other unit I bought. Uh, and honestly, there's not really much with this unit that I think could be improved upon. But with that being said, let's jump over to my cons list and just touch on the two things that I was actually hard pressed to find to throw on a cons list. So the two things that I put on my cons list are one, the unit is mostly plastic. So that's only a con in the fact that if you're rough on this unit, eventually you're gonna break it. Although it does not feel like cheap plastic when you pick it up out of the box, uh, you know, it's gonna break if you are throwing the wand on the ground and all that stuff like that, throwing it in and out of a truck all the time, you know, eventually it's gonna break. But for day-to-day -day use, if you treat it well and are careful with it, I think this would last for many, many years easily. Uh, so I don't think that'll be a problem for most people. And then the other thing is it has less pressure than some of the competing units. Uh, in fact, Westinghouse actually has another unit, the EPX 3000, which has even more pressure. So if that's a concern, you could just bump up to that level. And it has a few additional features too uh, that this one does not. But other than that, that's really my only two cons. I enjoyed using it. It was easy to use. It was easy to pack up and it did exactly what I needed it to do. So I really don't have any complaints. And I think if you guys are looking for an affordable unit, that really meets the needs of most homeowners. I think this is a great unit. It's a great place to go uh, and it's a great name to buy from. So I'll leave it there. You guys can decide. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and potentially click the like button if you want so that more people can see this video. Uh, I think that about covers it. So it's 4th of July weekend right now. So I hope you guys had a great 4th of July and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.